Welcome to another edition of Expert Talks by Calkine TV, Sage here. Today's guest is Ms Anna Shepherd, CEO of Bambuda Group. And to give you some background, Bambuda Group is a social enterprise providing professional coaching, education and corporate programs for leaders committed to creating social impact in business and holding the belief that kindness is the solution to understanding and embedding ESG priorities Anna has launched the inaugural Corporate Kindness Awards. And in my opinion, that is what the world needs right now, more kindness. And we're bound to gain something from Anna's insights today. Excited to bring you live, we have Ms. Anna Shepherd, CEO at Bambuda Group. Welcome to the show, Anna. Thank you, so great to be here today. So lovely to have you, and we should make the most of our time together. Let's start with finding out a bit more about your innovative brand. So what was the inspiration behind creation, creating Bambuda Group, please? Well, Bambuda is actually, um, Bam is about working hard. Buddha is about working kind. It's about trying to put more humanity back into business. And we've been working really, really hard at making money over the past you know, century or so. But now we need to work really, really hard at being better for ourselves, the community, environment and our people. So um, it was founded based on the fact that there really wasn't much out there with regards to leadership development for people that were striving to be a different kind of leader. And that's where the concept for Bambuda came from was what if we can create an environment that brings the knowledge, the resources, the tools, the coaching, and the community that will enable these leaders of businesses, big and small, to be able to start taking steps to create a more ethical kind of businesses that are better for people, profit, and the planet. Exactly. That is such an amazing mission because that emotional intelligence that's required to be a good leader and to take an enterprise forward sometimes can't be so easily learnt and a lot of support's required there. That's great to hear that you're working towards helping people achieve those goals. And employment engagement has become a strong pillar in human resources policy with some saying that office politics even happen whilst on Zoom. What are the main aims of your Corporate Kindness Awards, please. Yes, yeah, so we've actually recognised and uh, the kind of common pillars that we now affect businesses and the way they operate, the way they're perceived from a brand perspective, the way staff engage. You know, a recent Gallup report shows globally only twenty percent of the workforce are actually actively engaged. So we've identified four key pillars kindness to people, customers, community, and environment. And we've created a day which is a conference like no other that's ever been created where leaders and their teams and all sorts of businesses are coming down to learn from subject matter experts, from everything from mental health to community engagement to brand purpose and how you can start bringing this to life within your own businesses. The day is full of feel good vibes, all sorts of entertainment. And we're really trying to get everybody to regroup together Together to discuss and consider what the future can look like for business and what this next chapter looks like for those individuals within businesses. The day will end with an amazing awards and we've got some brilliant finalists and sponsors. Bloom's the Chemist are one of our sponsors, Cisco, Fujitsu, 6am and many, many others. So we're really, really proud to have so many amazing businesses supporting this. And I think there's a need for more kindness, understanding and empathy now because we're in a very different world to the world we were in two years ago. So the awards, we are the inaugural awards, the first ones, and they'll be running annually moving forward, uh, where we'll be able to celebrate some of the businesses that are really, really excelling across these different areas. It's amazing that you're taking this forward. It sounds like a great initiative. Best of luck with that. So it's actually an in-person event. It is. Uh, we have a certain amount of in-person tickets and uh, they're almost sold out actually, but we are doing a live stream as well, thanks to our partners at Wesley Conference Centre and Success Resources. So you can still get your tickets, you can zoom in, it's going to be a brilliant experience and you'll still have access to a lot of that content and footage afterwards. We've even got the likes of Christo Brand, who is Nelson Mandela's uh, prison guard, who's going to be uh, doing a speech on the day, showcasing what real friendship looks like, even with unlikely people and um, you know it's a brilliant example of kindness we've got Madame Tussauds bringing down some wax works of Lady Gaga and Nelson Mandela it's going to be a really fun day and a great experience even for those that are going to be zooming in through virtual tickets sounds amazing 
how would you describe a toxic workplace? This is an issue that is prevalent. People complain about it. People's lives are affected by it. But in your opinion, how much money do toxic work cultures cost businesses on average? Massive amounts of money. I mean, there's a lot of stats and research out there, but just constant churn and burn of staff is more, much more expensive than it is to actually maintain, retain, cultivate and love your people. Um, you know, and, and I think the reality of toxic workplaces, it can start anywhere, the toxicity, but often we find it's a lack of awareness, a lack of knowledge, a lack of accountability, and also a lack of understanding of the impact that you have across the organization or the business in the different ways in which you operate. So we actually have a definition of a kind leader at Bambooda Group. And kindness we see is defined as the quality of being friendly, generous and considerate while kindness in leadership is also about taking intentional positive action to create improved sustainable and inclusive outcomes for all stakeholders not only when it's easy to be kind but also when it's hard to be so and there that's what the difference is between businesses that thrive and are able to cultivate their staff are able to really look after their people and actually get competitive advantage and return on investment as a result compared to those that don't it's the accountability against your values against your purpose as a business and then making sure that we all understand how we fit into that bigger picture and the culture that we want to create together uh yeah so so you know there's lots of different types of toxic workplaces but one thing's for sure there's got to be accountability in line with your values right from the top and um you know, if you don't work hard to create your culture and maintain your culture, one will be created and it might not be the one you want. And that's where the conference, we hope, will give people lots and lots of support, advice, skills. We've even got a mental health panel to look at different ways that we can work moving forward. That's great to hear because there is that subtle level of energy that you may not even realise uh, that you're connecting with people at that level, but somehow it does have an effect. And if there's a way to support people so they're always feeling energised and positive on all levels, on all energetic levels, I think it, it can only be a good thing and hopefully add to more positive action in the workplace and more employee engagement. So, Absolutely. Thanks, Anna. Kindness can sometimes be thought of a weakness, sadly. But on the other hand, in the case of the developed countries helping emerging economies, we sometimes are maybe thinking about what their ulterior motives are and if we should be cautious of people's generous favours, especially in the workplace. Do you have any insights on this to share? Yeah, I think I think there's a, a lack of trust across the board at the moment. Interesting, the new uh, Elderman Trust Barometer's just come out to 2022, and businesses are now more trusted, believe it or not, than any other institution um, at all, government, so on and so forth. So it's quite interesting now because people are really holding businesses accountable, um, and it's it's much harder to you know, not actually do the right thing because of access to information. Um, but, you know, the reality of it is, you know, if a business is being authentic because of how transparent they're being, how consistent they're being with what they're doing. And, you know, it, it doesn't take much to do a little bit of extra research with different businesses to see who you want to buy from. Consumer habits have shifted dramatically now and customers are following movements that believe in the values that they have and the change they want to see in the world. People are moving their money into more ethical super accounts and all of these types of things. So, you know, a lot has shifted, but there's no two ways around it. How you treat your customers, your community, the environment and people but most of all yourself as a leader is now directly correlated to your bottom line, your risk and the ESG um, element. So, I mean, we do really well with the E and the G, you know, it, when it comes to governance and risk, E being, you know, environmental, G being governance, but we're not very good at social. So how do we get better at that in a time where we've needed it the most? Um, so knowing your influence, knowing your impact, communicating it, and you know what? No one's perfect. But even if you know where you're at as a business, the steps you can take and the commitments you can make will speak volumes for, for the intention and the authenticity. 
So true. Thank you for articulating that for us. And I think as leaders, it, it can be lonely at the top sometimes. And you have to draw that line between, you know, best pals or best buddies with your workmates, but also being in charge and, and having the authority. So it is a, it's, it's a fine balance there. Um, what are your plans moving forward into 2022? And, and what are the main benefits from your corporate training and programs, please? Yeah, I mean, every penny of the money that goes and is fundraised at the Corporate Kindness Conference and Awards will go into our Game Changer program, which is a 12-month academy um, for diverse business owners and leaders and underrepresented, uh, where they can access a coach and all sorts of knowledge building and learning. But we've got a corporate offering for this called the Kind Leader Program, where we actually do in-house acad academies with businesses to help them build more consistency across teams, more connection, more knowledge with the aim of over a 12-month period those leaders are coming into teams and hubs, facilitated safe spaces to find solutions. Everybody gets a coach on the journey with us. It is lonely at the top and, you know, practicing and learning and, and experimenting with new ways of working is really, really important. So our in-house academies are absolutely awesome. They build the knowledge, which is often missing in organizations around the role of social responsibility the, and how that fits into your brand, your people, your community, your stakeholders, your shareholders. So that is something that a lot, a lot of businesses are engaged with us on. And even the money from that goes into our scholarship program. So it's, it's a very win-win solution as a social enterprise we're absolutely committed. In the last two years alone over COVID, we've given $325,000 worth of scholarships um, to underrepresented business owners and leaders. So the solutions we've built are based on a curriculum um, that we have built over years and with many, many people contributing. And um, it's really tried and tested to, to really start shifting organisations from should we to we're doing it. And uh, we're doing it really well. Sounds great. Anna, thanks so much for sharing your incredible project and insights with us. So if people did want to connect with your brand and gain from these coaching programs, is it limited to organisations or do you take on sole traders as well and people who are just interested in leadership? Yeah, we can, we do have individual um, programs. So you can become part of a peer-to-peer -peer group of other business leaders um, or you can have individual coaching programs. So we look after everybody big and small and uh, we can do that because of the amount of support we get from the bigger businesses and also through uh, those that donate the time. All of our professional coaches give their time each year to enable us to develop this community, this movement and, and to build the knowledge and support for those leaders. So it doesn't matter how big or small you are, you can jump onto our website, which is bambudagroup.com. BAM is about working hard. Buddha is about working kind group is about us coming together com and if you want to get some tickets for the conference which i think you should because it's awesome just jump onto corporate kindness awards.com and uh, you'll be able to see the program the lineup and all the good stuff there fantastic really appreciate your time today and best of luck with your event thank you so much and take care of yourselves and uh, thank you for giving us the airtime to talk about how important kindness is for business Absolutely. Not a problem at all. Enjoy your day. You too. If you just joined us, we had a very inspiring discussion with Anna Shepherd, CEO at Bambuda Group. And please watch the full interview at Calkine Media's YouTube channel and keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Till the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media.